The Chargers have opened up their mandatory minicamp and we got a sneak peek of the first string offense and defense with a few surprise starters. You are locked on Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Lockdown Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together for over six seasons. We're heading into our fifth season as the host of the Lockdown Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen. To make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe to the Lockdown Chargers YouTube channel and also follow the show for free on all platforms wherever you you get your podcast from. But David, we got some on-field product to talk about today, including a first look at the Chargers' first string offense and defense. And there was a few surprises defensively with guys like Michael Davis, Jerry Tillery, Drew Tranquil all on the bench when the first team defense was out there. And Storm Norton got the first crack at things at right tackle. But we'll also talk about what Brandon Staley had to say about some of the new starters, Bryce Callahan and Kyle Van Noy, to name a couple and talk about a surprise surgery from Derwin James that we didn't know about. But he's okay. He'll be ready for training camp. He's good to go. It's all precautionary. But today's episode is brought to you by Blue Nile. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Sports listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings. Make sure you use the promo code LOCKEDON at checkout. But David... We got to see, I mean, it's early, obviously, but we got to see what the starting defense and offense looked like. And there were a couple of new faces that seem to have taken some starting spots already early on during mandatory minicamp. Yeah, I mean, a couple of surprises out there, a couple of of names that I wasn't exactly sure I would see out there as a as a starter in a starting this early. Yeah, Yeah. this early. A couple were. I mean, most of it was pretty obvious, and I, I think we have a pretty good grasp of the majority of the guys that we're going to see out there or who we intend those to be. But there is definitely a couple of guys that maybe go, hmm, okay, that's the direction, at least at this moment in time. Yeah, and shout out to Daniel Popper, who was out at the mandatory mini camps and got a first look at what the starting offense and defense were. But when you're looking at the defensive side of things, that's where the biggest surprise was because you have it. Bryce Callahan starting in the start in the slot right away with Asante Samuel Jr. JC Jackson on the outside because they started in a nickel package. On the interior, you have Sebastian Joseph Day and Austin Johnson on the edge, the two guys you would think of, Mac and Bosa. And then at linebacker, it was Troy Reader and Kyle Van Noy. But that's David Troy Reader and Kyle Van Noy. Obviously, Kenneth Murray's injured, so that changes things a little bit. And Bryce Callahan getting the first cracks at it, even as guys who were new to the team this year. Yeah, and I, I think it's the most interesting thing for me was just Kyle Van Noy being there at middle linebacker. And and uh, well, what, what does that mean? Does that mean that he's going to be the guy that's going to be there primarily? Or is he going to rotate around? And I think that's the beauty of having a player like that with that flexibility that's almost equally as good at both positions that can really bring you some strong value as an edge rusher and a guy who has been a green dot, who has called the plays that understands and has excelled as a middle linebacker, middle linebacker as well. So uh, I love that versatility, love that flexibility, and also just love the the fact that you have a guy that you actually feel good about in the middle of your defense. If you ask him to play middle linebacker, you feel like you're going to get quality play from him. And then Bryce Callahan, I mean, we kind of knew. I mean, this this guy was one of the better slot cornerbacks in the NFL when healthy. When he's out there, he has a lot of traits that make him a very, very good slot corner. Absolutely. And then we'll talk about what Brandon Staley had to say about that and some of the special attributes he has for that specific position, you know, in the slot, because there is, you know, certain things he brings to the table that most slot corners don't, especially from a deep speed point of view. You don't usually see guys that can be quick and fast. And Brandon Staley talked about that. But I think the biggest thing here, David, is just like, there's no Drew Tranquil, right? You thought he would get the first kind yeah. of shot at being the middle linebacker, starting middle linebacker as a guy who started last year. Really? I still thought Michael Davis would probably get the first shot at being an outside corner with maybe Asante Samuel Jr. on the inside. That wasn't the case. Popper said that he was coming and rotating and as an outside corner with the second unit. 
and Kyle Van Noy. I mean, the thing is for that is just no Drew Tranquil, but also with Kyle Van Noy, if you're not going to be using him as your starting edge rusher, why not use him as a linebacker? Yeah, he can still be your depth and third string guy. But for Jerry Tillery, for Drew Tranquil, for Michael Davis, it's not just they'll have to go out there and earn their spot. It seems like right now they have to go retake their spot. Yeah, and I mean, I think that was the biggest uh, takeaway from me for Drew And it's Tranquil. early, but it's hard it not is, to yeah. get, you know, but it's like, it's you see, and it's early. like, I mean, you have, everyone was there. That's the thing. Everybody was there. The full attendance. Yeah, they it's had like, their they had their pick of the litter, right? They had their hard pick not to overreact. of all of the players <laughs> that, you know, they could have out there in starting positions, and these are the guys that they went with. That's the first look. That was the first time that Brandon Staley is like, okay, I got all of my new pieces together. Right. I want to see what that looks like and this was the first combination of defenders that he wanted to see it's kind of like the preview to the movie you know we talk sure. you know brandon stilly talks about the movie all the time <laughs> whenever he's talking about how he likes to see his defense these these are the previews right here this is the preview of what you might see when they strap it up and play for real on sundays absolutely and i think it's just interesting, right? And it's just interesting to see that that's the way they, they rolled it out for the first time. It doesn't seem like they're worried about, you know, hurting any feelings or anything like yeah. that. I think it's just especially for like Drew Trink or someone, you know, with Kenneth Murray out. Yeah. Troy Reader, you know, just guy here. He's already out there. You know, Kyle yeah. Van Noy, I thought he was an edge rusher. He's out right. there in my spot, you know. So it is just interesting to see. And then I think for Jerry Tillery, there's not three interior defensive linemen, which there could be in some packages, but the Chargers run more out of their, you know, nickel and dime packages more than they do of traditional base defense. Yes. But that's, I mean, kind of what we expected is, you know, they brought Austin Johnson, Sebastian Joseph Day in for a reason. We talked about Morgan Fox versus Jerry Tillery, but there's going to be plenty of snaps where neither of those guys are on the field. And those two prized interior guys that you brought in will be those center focal points there especially on early downs. I was going to say on early downs, I think that's going to be what you see most of the time. You're going to see Sebastian Joseph day and Austin Johnson in the middle of that defensive line, because those are guys that the chargers trust to be able to stop the run and are stout and have showed that they can stop the run. That that's what they were brought in to do so that when they get into those third and long situations, then you can bring in a Morgan Fox or you can bring in a Jerry Tillery and you can, turn into those NASCAR packages where you really pin your ears back and come after the quarterback. But the one thing we don't know at this point is who we're going to see starting at right tackle, but we did get the first look and it was Storm Norton getting the first reps with Trey Pipkins also rotating in with the first unit. So as opposed to Michael Davis, who he wasn't rotating in with the ones, according to Daniel Popper, he was coming in exclusively with the second unit on the offensive side of things. It's everyone that you'd think the three wide receivers, Josh Palmer, uh, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. You have Gerald Everett out there at tight end. The starting offensive line looks the same on the left side. Corey Lindsley, Matt Filer, Rashawn Slater. And on the right side, it's Zion Johnson starting as a rookie and Storm Norton getting it the first reps at least at it. But I mean, that one, I, I, I don't, t- I mean, obviously we're taking the first part of it more seriously on the defensive side, but that one with those guys rotating, that's kind of what I expected. Yeah, that's exactly what I expect. I don't think they're going to hand anyone anything this year. And they know after watching Storm struggle, you know, a couple of times last year. And, you know, he played admirably. I think, you know, to be thrust into the fire and to be able to have to go out there against the best edge rushers in the world, he he did fairly well coming from the XFL. But it's just uh, the understanding that that level of play cannot be accepted again. And so they're going to be rotating guys in that right tackle pretty much the entire off season. That's the one thing I wouldn't take too much information out of and say, Oh no, storm Norton's automatically going to be the right tackle going forward. No, I, I don't think that at all. I think that there are going to have a true competition and that's exactly what it should be. And on the flip side, defensively, it's the same way, right? You yeah. can't put too much, you know, stock into that stuff. Yeah. But it's just interesting to see that they weren't worried about, hey, who started last year on the defensive side? Yeah. It's like, hey, we're getting these guys that we brought in who have played in this before. They're going to go out there. You're going to have to take it back. At least that's the message it's sent to me, right? But I'm not out there on that field. But I think the one thing is is what they've said about Trey Pipkins because they've said yeah. some very good, positive things about him, especially this offseason between Telesco and – Joe Lombardi and Brandon Staley and Brandon Staley also had some great things to say about Bryce Callahan and Kyle Van Noy, especially, I mean, with those dudes about as complimentary as you could be. And it makes a lot of sense why they're out there 
with that starting unit. But I think the thing is, is like if those two dudes come in in our starting, like we saw on Tuesday at this mandatory minicamp, like that's priceless to get those dudes at that part of free agency, right? If you're getting those dudes for that contract and they come in and pay the contributions that it looks like they may pay. But if you're looking to make a priceless moment, you go to BlueNile.com to make the moment special with a piece of jewelry that's going to mean so much to your significant other or your mother or someone important in your life. Because at BlueNile.com, you can celebrate all of life's special moments from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams or gifting a classic and timeless jewelry piece all at prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler. Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, Find jewelry as unique as her with a modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Build the engagement ring of her dreams or celebrate life's special moments with fine jewelry. And no matter what you're looking for, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Sports listeners get $50 off of purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings. Use the promo code LOCKEDON. That's promo code LOCKEDON, all caps, plus every order is insured. Ships free and arrives in a discreet package that won't give away what's inside. So make sure you guys can shop stress free and check out BlueNile.com today. All right, David. Well, we talked about Bryce Callahan and Kyle Van Noy. I feel like I'm saying Bryce Callahan weird. Bryce Callahan. I don't know what I'm doing there, but we know that they went out there and got the first crack defensively, and it's all walkthroughs, right? Because that's what this mini camp is. It's going to be all slow speed, eleven on eleven walkthroughs. High speed seven on seven with the big uglies off of the field, not having those dudes run into each other with right. no pads on. But you, you at least got to see it. And it was, you know, let guys like Derwin James, who we just found out had surgery, and Khalil Mack get out there and be a part of those as they try to set up Brandon Staley's defense going into year two. But before we get into all of what Brandon Staley had to say about his new additions, Kyle Van Noy and Bryce Kelly, and I do want to tell you guys to make sure you guys are checking out the NBA ultimate mock draft because it's happening right now and it's coming up quick guys june 16th with over 50 insiders nothing equals the ultimate nba mock draft the lockdown nba big board draft experts plus the odyssey insiders make sure you guys check it out the first pick is june 16th and you can find it wherever you get your podcast from searching ultimate nba mock draft but david back to the chargers biggest pickups during this offseason especially late in the proceedings when you hear what Brandon Steely had to say, and obviously it's nice to hear him up in the microphone, he got to always. talk about mandatory minicamp, and he always has things to say. I mean, with Brandon Steely, we've spent more time talking about you know press conferences than I think we ever did, just because it's always so enlightening. You it's know, actually because- nice to listen to. I mean, it's oh, yeah. not boring. It's not like listening to <laughs> chalk go down a chalkboard. He actually has information to provide, and that's why it's always appointment listening whenever Brandon Staley is up at the podium. And after practice, I think one of the things that was very natural to bring up is like, hey, Kyle Van Noy's out there being your starting off ball inside linebacker. Is yes. that what we can kind of expect? And he was, he was asked if he will fit into a role that existed in the defense last year. What he had to say was it'll be a position specifically tailored for him. It's not a position that he hasn't performed before. We're going to try to take advantage and try to leverage his experiences within our defense. He does bring the versatility to play on the edge or behind the ball. He's been a green dot before. We're going to try to utilize those experiences and skill sets to our advantage. And yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's what you bring a guy like this in for. I think it's nice to see them committed to using everything he brings to the table instead of just having him be a very high end edge three. And what makes you think that sitting here on June 15th, that he is going to be telling anyone exactly what the plan is for any of his. Well, I mean, what did Kyle Van Noy say, right? right? Like when, when he was asked it's about it, it's a secret. We're not going to tell you, you're not going to know role. it's because he's going to do both. I mean, I think we understand that right now. He might do one more than the other. And we don't know that yet, but we know what he's been brought in to do. And just the, the, that's the, the theme. That's the theme of Brandon Staley's team is versatility, bringing in guys that can do multiple things, so the mad scientist can go out there and try to match up every single matchup with a defender to be able to neutralize the threat. That's exactly what Brandon Staley wants to do. Yeah, and I mean, Kenneth Murray, Brandon Staley also talked about and said, you know, is progressing, didn't give any real update on it, but said basically, we hope he's ready at some point during training camp at this point. And they're not going to rush him along. And that's been Brandon Staley's MO since he took over. It's hard to argue with the results of last year too. But yeah, the thing is, is like, 
like I said before, if, if you have Kyle Van Noy, why sit him on the bench just because you think of him more as an edge rusher, right? And I mean, obviously, when you want to play edge rusher and get sacks, and that's going to get you paid more. But if you want to be like Kyle Van, Noy, Kyle Van Noy says, being on this defense, trying to fill a role to kind of bring a team over the top, you're going to do whatever you can to make an impact. And the dude can absolutely make an impact in the middle of your defense, especially compared to some of the, you know, subpar linebacking play that we've seen from that defense the last several years, right? With a few exceptions, obviously, because you're why I'm being a big one last year with how well he played. Brand Steely, though, was not most complimentary about Kyle Van Noy. He was most complimentary about Bryce Callahan. And the quote is super, super long. But basically what he said is, you don't get long speed and quickness. He brings both of those things to the table. He has the processing ability to be close to the line of scrimmage, which is something that's huge in the slot because there's so much movement. There's so many things happening around you. It's chaos. And he stays calm in those situations. And he also said, even though he's a smaller guy, he has the unique combination of the the quickness and strength in his lower body. He's not a guy that gets pushed around because he has strong lowers. And he also has the long speed. And it's just like, David, I mean, it's like, obviously the biggest thing with him is staying healthy. And that's the reason yeah. why he's not starting every game, every season for whatever team he's on for the most part. Yeah. But I mean, it looks like Michael Davis has a long road ahead of him. If this is what he's saying about the guy that's currently ahead of him. Well, he's gushing about Bryce Callahan, right? He's like, he's effusive with his praise. He's very, very happy that he has that guy on the team. And it seems like he brings a very unique skill set to that, you know, slot cornerback position. You don't exactly always see guys that can turn and run and burn, you know, with these really fast wide receivers. It's usually, you know, the quick, you know, the short, quick passes and you're trying to, you know, be calm and you're trying to defend those. Be, but hey, you never know. They might rotate a guy like a Tyree Kill in the slot and, and make you have to go run with him. So having a guy that has that long speed and that quickness in that package, I think that's always alluring for any kind of coaching staff. So if Bryce Callahan can stay healthy, his skill set obviously translates and it helps this Chargers defense without a doubt. Well, and I think the thing is, too, is just putting this in comparing it against what Brian Seeley has had to say about Michael Davis and how far yes. he has to come. And just also knowing that Bryce Callahan has so much experience in at least a very similar defense to yeah. what Brandon Staley is running now with a lot of the same verbiage, a lot of ability to just be able to pick it up quickly and not have to be working from behind to try to get up to speed. It's a huge advantage. A it's a huge advantage. It's huge. And I mean, he's more comfortable, I would guess, at this point than Michael Davis is having only been in of the system course. for one year. Right. And it, and it's not apples to apples because you have, no. you know, if Michael Davis does win his starting slot back, it would probably be at least partially dependent on them wanting to move Asante Samuel Jr. in the slot. And yeah. we did hear from Daniel Popper, David, that that was an option with some of the DB packages. They did have him in the slot. So that that is something we can expect to see. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Michael Davis, like I said on, on the other show on Monday, Michael Davis is a guy that has a skill set that will work against these bigger tight ends that you're going to see in, in the in the NL, excuse me, in the AFC West and or and those, you know, gigantic receivers that you're going to see around the NFL. There's plenty of teams that have six foot three, six foot four really big, really tall, really strong, really fast wide receivers. And you need to have a corner that has the size and the speed to be able to match up with that. And Michael Davis has that in spades. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and Asante Samuel Jr., he can work on the outside, but it'd be yeah. interesting if he, they do want to move him inside, if that automatically means Michael Davis is coming onto the field, or if they will put Bryce Callahan outside and try it out there and see what happens just because that wasn't something we got to see on day one of mandatory minicamp, knowing how excruciatingly early it is to be talking <laughs> about it. But one thing that I mean, the biggest nugget, David, was just Derwin James got surgery on a torn labrum. We didn't know about it <laughs> until today. So we're going to talk about our reaction to that and also him just being okay and it all being precautionary and potentially a contract extension coming up according to some of the reports that are out there right now. But David, when I saw that news, I mean, I was shocked. I mean, he didn't put it on Instagram like, you know, Kenneth Murray did or anything. So we had no reason. I mean, it was, Truly shocking, but not as shocking as me realizing I have a new favorite flavor of Built Bar, David. And I don't know if you've heard the rumblings, but there's a new king in town, and it is the Mud Pie Built Bar. And I know you guys are thinking, like, Mud Pie Built Bar. Yes, Mud Pie Built Bar available in puffs 
or in traditional built bars. They're the they're the best built bars that are out there. They're the best protein bar in the world already. I mean, if you want to upgrade your protein bar game, you always go to built bar. But we're talking about mud pie flavor. I mean, they've had so many great flavors. You're not sure if what mud pie tastes like. If you're a chocolate fan, you better sit down for this. The new mud pie is rich whipped cream, chocolate mousse, smothered in 100 percent real chocolate, and topped with cookies and cream crumbles. I mean, I've already told you guys that cookies and cream is already one of my favorite built bars already. Mud pie built bars. They're out right now. It's it's the best built bar there is. And, and it's crazy because I've talked about a lot of my favorites. Peanut butter brownie, cookies and cream. The birthday cake was a really, really good flavor. This one beats all of them. The mud pie built bar is here now. And it is delicious. And it's just going to blow any other protein bar that you've ever had out of the water. I mean, this is a true game changer here, guys. The puffs are great. And there's a bunch of great flavors that you guys can choose from. There's mixed boxes where you can try everything. But right now, it's hard not to think or to think about any other flavor than Mud Pie, David. So make sure you guys go to Built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and you can save 15% off your order of Mud Pie Built Bars. That's promo code LOCKED15, all caps, one word for 15% off at Built.com. All right, David. Well, now it's time to get into one thing I wasn't expecting to hear from Brandon Staley at his press conference, and there was a couple, but this was obviously the biggest one, and it was that Derwin James, who was sitting out all of the competitive seven-on-seven sessions at Chargers practice, was because he had shoulder surgery. And Daniel Popper pointed out on from theathletic.com that he injured his shoulder in the second half of week three against the Chiefs, which basically means, David, he was – performing at the level we saw last season with a torn labrum for most of the season. That's absolutely insane. Okay. And, Silly. and for people who don't know, I have had labral surgery. Okay. <laughs> I have, I tore my labrum and my rotator cuff in my right shoulder after an unfortunate accident at work where I fell off an extension ladder. It was, it was ugly. You know, I didn't even know you fell off a ladder. Yeah. Yeah. It could have been much worse, but you know, like every instinct, your mind tells you to put your hands out in front of you. So, I did that and my shoulder went in and it tore and it was ugly. And so my point is, is you can't, you could not reach your hands above, you know, your, above your face. So to see that Derwin James played <laughs> 15, well, 14 games with a torn labrum without the ability to really have the range of motion to, to be able to play football at a high level is astonishing to me. And also, and for the podcast audience, when he's saying that, what he's doing is he's not being able to basically lift his arms above his shoulders. So yeah, you can't lift you're your thinking arms above about your shoulders. Playing defensive back when you can only lift your arms up level with your shoulders, pretty hard to play defensive back. So the real question is, David, are we giving him a pass on the dropped interceptions because of the torn labrum? Because we were, couldn't believe the easy picks Derwin James was dropping. Are we giving him a pass on those now? Because we were pretty harsh. Yeah, yeah, we're giving him a little bit of a pass right there. Just with my experience <laughs> with that injury, it's it's excruciating and it absolutely limits your range of motion. So the fact that he was able to go out there and play most of the season with that kind of injury speaks to his toughness, speaks to the person that Derwin James is, and speaks to his love for the game and the love for his teammates. He, he knows his teammates need him, and he knows that he is an integral part of this defense and of this football team and this organization in general. So he was, he sucked it up and he went out there and still played extraordinary football considering the circumstances. Yeah. I mean, almost uh, you know, borderline all pro level is how good he was. And we, always, I think considered anything that wasn't, you know, up to his excellent standards, just shaking off the rest after missing almost two full seasons of football. And I mean, the fact that, he wasn't going to let it happen again and played through that injury, I think, speaks a lot to his character and, and you know, him just his leadership ability and how much he loves the game and, and how here he is for this team right now. But the good news is, is Brandon Staley said purely precautionary, basically meaning, hey, if he had to go out there right now, he could. He could go. And I know yeah. pads have come a long ways in, in, like in football in general from like when I was playing high school football, but like. Football pads are not the easiest thing to catch footballs in anyway. So no, they're you throw not. <laughs> a, a torn labrum on top of that. And you're also, you know, what that has to do with being able to form tackle somebody, you know, yeah. and how that could debilitate you in that aspect as well. I mean, to do what he did, Crazy. never can stop being impressed with, with how this dude just, you know, in general on the field, off the field, mostly on the field, but just absolutely nuts that he was able to do that. And in better Derwin James news, USA Today's Tyler Dragon came out with the report on Tuesday 
made it seem like an extension Dragon. could be. I mean, first of all, just a great name. <laughs> Amazing <but> name. <laughs> Tyler Dragon did tell us, though, David, that the Chargers are in preliminary talks with Derwin James to get a long term contract extension done with the hopes that they can get it done by the start of the season. Hallelujah. Music to my ears. It's exactly what I want to hear because Derwin James is a phenomenal football player. He is one of one in this league because he can do it all. He can do anything that you ask him to do. His leadership, he embodies everything that it is to be a charger, to be a leader of men, and he's a great man. This is a guy that you want on your side for a very long time. And we know that the Chargers absolutely love Derwin James and there's no uh, absence of reasons why. So it is nice to hear that they are at least getting to the table, starting these conversations, and hopefully they can get this done swiftly. And so they can put it behind us and it not be any kind of distraction going into the season. And I mean, unless, you know, Tom Plusk is out there still fishing for right tackles and free agency, there's nothing that should be a bigger priority for him right now than locking this dude down because not only is it just it doesn't you know goes without saying that you must resign because he's an all pro level the heart and soul of your team one of the faces of the franchise the other thing, it's only going to get more expensive yes it, it, it's, I, it's as soon as these guys start you know signing i mean as soon as the next contract he's going to be the highest paid safety so the longer that you wait it's just the, the price tag is going up. Like there's, there's really no benefit to waiting at this point. You're good with his injury history, right? You saw him play through it last season and there's just no real reason to wait other than, you know, not being able to come to terms with, you know, something reasonable because it's not crazy to think he's going to be the highest paid safety. No, it's not. And also there's another safety out there that we talked about Jesse Bates, who is also looking at getting a new contract. And whenever there's a player that plays your similar position, that is in line for a contract that is only going to drive that money even higher. So the sooner you get this deal done, the better it is for everybody. Peace of mind, security for Derwin James, and also you have locked up one of the best players in the NFL and you keep him with the organization. Yeah, and it has to be of the highest priority. There's just not a more important player to the Chargers defensively. We talked about that a little bit. But it was also nice to hear about another safety that's been making waves. We did hear Taylor Bashotti from NFL Network reported that JT Woods got an interception at mandatory minicamp off of Justin Herbert. So hopefully that starts building his confidence. But Brian Staley also talked about a player we didn't get to see a lot of last year, Dave, and that is Mark Webb, who basically had a red shirt rookie season because of injuries and he was a guy that was brought in as a seventh round pick that Brandon Staley said could have had a big role last year he said Mark Webb is going to be ready for training camp we tried to bring him along slowly this springtime so he can be at full speed for training camp but he's going to add a lot of competition in the secondary we're expecting a lot from him he was a guy that was on the verge I think of playing quite a bit of football and then he had an injury at the end of the season we're hopeful for him but I mean it's hard not to disagree with that or hard to disagree with that David just because the charge were so ravaged Last year, it would have been nice if we could have seen him get his feet wet a little bit more. He played sparingly, but now he's kind of an unknown going into this, but is someone that could have an impact on how this secondary death plays out. Mark da Mark Webb was the guy I was really excited to watch. I mean, he <laughs> David was one of the said guys. Mark Davis. Hey, calm down now. Hold on. Hey, don't don't you do that to me. I mean, that's what it sounded like. I don't care what it sounded like. Uh, no. <laughs> Mark Webb was a guy I was super excited about watching last year. A guy that I think, you know, coming out of Georgia had all of the things that you're looking for. He had some good size. He has some good speed. He had the ability to roam and he had some um, some good uh, coverage ability there. And we just never got to see that matriculate because of the injury. I felt like we were robbed of that experience for Mark Webb. And I feel like he, him going into this season, hopefully absorbing all of the information that he possibly could on the defense to be able to go out there and come back and play fast and try to earn a role. I think, you know, that back end of that safety group is vulnerable. And I think there is an opportunity for him to carve out a role, especially if he can show that he can excel on special teams and kind of make himself valuable there. I feel like there is a spot there for Mark Webb to maybe supplant somebody on the roster. Yeah, and it would be a low Gilman, right? No, no point be. in beating around the bush because, I mean, I think yeah. we all agree that JT Woods is safe yeah. uh, as a third-round pick in 2022. You know, like that's something that you're not going to cut a third-round pick. No. And then Mark Webb – 
he's having very complimentary things said about him. I think if that happened, I think you would get a more balanced safety group, I think, because yeah. you have two guys. I think Mark Webb fits more of the Derwin James role yeah, than he would safety, yeah. the Nazir Adderley role, yeah. right? Being that strong safety, even though it's split safety, so it's not that cut and dry in right. the his defense. Both guys are responsible for, for a lot of things. But I do think it at least balances things out because there was just not another guy that like Nazir Adderley that could come in last year for him. Now you got a guy like JT Woods. Never going to be a guy who can replace Derwin James, but if you had Never. to say well, who his backup is, it would probably be Mark Webb if that's the way things shake out. And I think those four dudes at this point are the most likely to make this team as safeties. I mean, we've seen the Chargers keep three safeties at one point. And they didn't really have anyone else on the roster, but now it's a little deeper. And a guy like JT Woods picking off Justin Herbert has a chance to get some playing time this year. Maybe the same for Mark Webb going into his second year. Hopefully he can stay healthy and prove what he has, right? Because as a seventh round pick, you're never safe, right? But obviously it sounds like they like what they see in in his progress so far coming back from injury and what they saw from him in year one. But that is going to wrap things up for today. The great news is we'll be back with you guys on Friday with a big show telling you why the best pass rush duo in the league is Chandler Jones and Max Crowd. No, I'm just kidding. It's Joey Bosa. It's Khalil Mack, and we're going to tell you why on Friday and also talk about what they had to say about joining forces and creating the superhuman pass rushing duo that they have, the tandem to be reckoned with across the NFL. But until then, to make sure you guys don't miss it, subscribe to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and also follow the show for free on all platforms wherever you get your podcast from. You can also find the show on all of our social media every single day. We post to our at Locked On LAC Twitter account. We post to the Locked On Chargers Facebook page, and we post at Locked On Chargers on Instagram as well. You can also follow me on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports and David Drogmeyer on Twitter at Drotalk SD. And if you guys watch on you know Apple or listen on Apple or Spotify or wherever you guys get it, if you can't find it on Google right now, we understand. We really apologize for everything. Hopefully, you can hear this and you found it somewhere else. But you can also find the show on any on any platform. You can go to our link tree that's on all of our social media. Find all the different places you can find us. And you can find us on our new Locked On Chargers YouTube channel as well. But that is going to wrap things up for today's show. If you guys want to get your voicemails in, we'll be definitely getting into some fan stuff very soon. So you can call on to 323-524-7924. But make sure you guys are back here on Friday with us to tell you why Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack are the best pass rushing duo in the NFL. But until then, take it easy and go Bolts.